guys, it's Lynn with Little Fit Nursery. Um, I'm here today to talk about a pretty serious topic. Um, and it's, it's a difficult thing to talk about and I've cried pretty much every day this week, but I felt like it was important to come on here and make this video. And so some of you guys, you know, it's a little bit scary to, you know, talk about this stuff because you know, I'm sure there are some racist people who are watching this video. So, um, but I just wanted, you know, everyone to just hear, you know, just some things that are on my heart and, um, you know, and I apologize in advance if I'm not very articulate, but, um, but yeah, I just, I just need to process through this and I need to talk about it. Um, while I'm, while I chat, I'm going to be changing, um, Silicon Baby Melina. She is the Melina sculpt by Andrea Arcello. I'm going to change her into this romper by T Collection, which is, I've had this on a baby recently, but I think it'll look really cute on her. So I'm going to change her and I'm going to chat. Anyway, guys, so um, ever since the, so being an Asian American in the U.S., I've always just throughout my life gotten kind of you know, different racist, like different like racist uh, things have like happened to me throughout my life. Um, the most common thing that happens is like, usually it'll be like some random guy comes up to me and, and it usually, and, it, and it's always come from men. Like I've, I haven't experienced this from other women for some reason, uh, but some random guy will like come up to me and the most common thing is, um, you know, they will say ni hao and like you know try to um talk like fake chinese to me and um but in a little like a really mocking way if, if if that makes sense um so it's not like or they'll say like where are you from and and it's like well look i'm i'm from california you know i'm like born and raised here i'm fully american my um, parents immigrated from china but you know, I am fully American and, um, and you know, my parents are, or were like, my dad has passed away, but, um, as well, you know, they are full U S citizens. And so, um, and our country is a melting pot of people who all came over at some point, even though we still have, you know, I guess, um, a white majority or whatnot, but you know, we all, we all came over <laughs> from other countries at some point. So, so to me, like to be asked, like, where are you from? Like is like, it's just, it's just kind of like, and maybe you guys don't think that's a big deal, but it is a big deal. Cause it really, with that question, it makes you feel like you don't belong. It makes you feel like that. It makes me feel like, um, you know, like, like you're always viewed as a foreigner, always viewed as an outsider, never viewed and accepted as, you know, a, a core part of, um, you know, never viewed and accepted as like a full American or something like that. So, so those things have happened. Okay. Um, and, you know, just kind of like throughout, throughout my life and, you know, even into adulthood and things like that. And, you know, there's always like the, 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 the racial jokes and things like that. Um, and then of course there's always like the, the Asian stereotypes that like, you know, always like good at math or a lot of us become doctors or whatever, whatever the stereotypes are, um, which are also harmful in their own ways as well, you know? So, um, and in my, co in, in my, um, show notes, I'm, or in the comments, I'm going to, I'm going to link to an article that, um, I think really does a good job of summarizing just how I, how I've been feeling these days. Um, I'm going to pick her up really quickly. She's so cute. Sorry, you guys probably hear Ethan crying here. Um, anyway, so, so the recent things that have been really bothering me lately is just the huge rise in, um, anti-Asian hate crimes. Um, culminating in the recent shootings in Atlanta. So, um, so there is this like 20 year old, 20 year old or 21 year old, like, um, Caucasian male 
decided, you know, one day that he was going to go and murder a bunch of Asian people. And guys, I don't care that he says it wasn't hate crime related. He's clearly trying to cover his own behind here because, um, he, because, you know, if it's a hate crime, it's prosecuted much more severely, I think, than if it's not a hate crime. So he's going to say that, but you know what? He doesn't get to say that because he went and he targeted three Asian owned businesses, killed eight people, six were Asian women. And it is like, when I saw what had happened, my, I, I was just devastated. And this was the culmination. This isn't a one-time thing. This is the culmination of a year of hate crimes, anti-Asian rhetoric that was encouraged by former President Trump. And I know a lot of you guys out there are Trump supporters and you may support him for different reasons. I certainly hope none of you guys support his encouragement of the racist rhetoric because it is not okay. And Black Lives Matter or an being anti-racism um, anti is not like a politically correct trendy thing. It is the it, it is the right thing for us as humans to support, okay? And I know that this is not gonna be popular for some of you guys who support President Trump and, you know, really, um, and, and yeah, and, and kind of support him no matter what, but like you guys have to know that he really encouraged people to um, attack Asians and to speak and like he called the coronavirus the Chinese virus, the Kun flu, he called it all sorts of things to um, to really point the finger at China and then basically all Asian Americans have a target on our back ever since he did that. So I've been really angry this past year and actually for the past several years with him, you know, encouraging racist attitudes and um and i know that there are people out there who probably like it's not like these people all of a sudden became racist but it was like it made it okay for them to be racist openly and that is not okay um we are all you know equal citizens here in this country regardless of our skin color regardless of where we're from and we all just want to be treated that way like i don't know why that is like so hard to understand so guys i honestly like it's really broken my heart like you know seeing when i see support for trump it feels like it is people who are not caring about how his rhetoric makes me and others like me feel the bipoc people of color community yeah so i i, I just i just don't understand it um so I do think he is, of course, he didn't like, you know, tell this guy to go and do these things, but I think he created an atmosphere that over years and years, you know, made it okay. And guys, there's been a like nearly 2000% increase in anti-Asian hate crimes over the past year, ever since the COVID pandemic hit. And um, Trump kind of kept calling this the China virus and things like that. And it, your Asian American brothers and sisters are not to blame, okay? We are all here, like, dealing with the consequences of the pandemic, frustrated that we can't go out, you know, stuck at home. We're all dealing with the same thing. Um, and, you know, kind of piling on hate crimes on top of that just makes it all so much worse. Um, there's a family of four that was in, and a lot of you guys don't know the news or haven't seen the news. Um, and I know there's a lot of news out there, but... There was a situation with a family of four at a Walmart in Texas. Um, I think it was back in like the spring summertime of 2020. And a random guy came up and he stabbed all four family members with a knife. And he was trying to kill them. Thank goodness he got apprehended and the family was able to, none of them were killed. But you guys, this is a family. This is a four-year-old. It's a family of four with a four-year-old and a two-year-old. If you're like attacking children, that is like a new low. There's been a huge recent spike in attacks against our elderly. And that is just so, that is so cowardly. Like, you know, like you're attacking people who really cannot fight back. Although there's a 74 year old woman or 75 year old woman in um, San Francisco who grabbed a wooden plank and she like beat up her attacker, like good for her. Um, 
but like it is just like it is just inexcusable and then culminating with these crimes in atlanta where this random shooter decides to go and murder a bunch of people in cold blood and you guys he may say it wasn't anti-asian but one of the people in the salon like one of the survivors heard him say i'm going to kill all the asians so how is that not a hate crime okay the other thing that like just pisses me off is um the policeman who was assigned to the case um the policeman who was assigned to the case like he like, like there's a social media post where he bought one of these like t-shirts calling it the china virus and he i guess he thought that was funny and so he clearly is a racist himself and he and you know what he did he he didn't identify or sympathize with the victims and their families he said the killer was quote unquote having a bad day guys when i have a bad day i might eat ice cream and chips and like curl up in my bed or watch netflix i don't go out killing a bunch of people it's just so ridiculous so i'm just angry you guys i'm really angry and i'm disappointed too like i um you know i'm on facebook you know my um lynn Dahl fan account i'm on facebook i'm friends with thousands of you guys okay they're on facebook not a single person that i was able to read and i didn't read the entire news feed but i didn't see a single person post about the anti-asian hate crimes or speak out against it and you guys when when that when people aren't speaking out against it it makes us feel invisible it makes me feel like i'm not seen i'm not heard and that no one cares and that just sucks that just sucks um so um sorry for ethan you guys i'm just gonna ignore that because like greg needs to take care of him right now so i told him i was making videos so like i'm just frustrated i'm scared i'm sad i'm angry i've cried every single day this week and and off and on for the past like several weeks ever since kind of the spike of crime started getting worse and worse i was upset no one in my company was saying anything i finally wrote the ceo and he responded so graciously and did make an announcement internally within the company denouncing these hate crimes hold on one second greg can you please take him i'm making a video right now so um so like and that's fine you guys are going to criti criticize my parenting but it's not my shift right now <laughs> i was just watching him um i'm just so f i'm just so tired and exhausted like i've like no more tears left i i really like i'm operating at like half capacity at work i'm afraid to go get my hair cut at the salon i go to that's in an asian neighborhood i'm afraid to leave my house i wear a hat and sunglasses when i take my walks it just just does not feel safe and it sucks and i'm going to turn off my comments because i'm sure all the like pro trump people are going to hop in and defend him and i just can't hear that right now guys i just can't but i needed to make this video to say my piece because I, frankly i'm really disappointed that nobody else has been standing up and saying something about this and your Asian friends are not okay. They may not be posting on social media. They may not be talking about this, but they are not okay right now. So I just, I just need you guys to understand that just, you know, and yes, I know. And I, and I'm not sharing this to take away from, you know, black people and their experiences and, you know, they have it so hard and I'm not saying that ours is worse or anything like that. It's all hard. Okay. And sometimes I think, you know, Asians don't feel like they can speak out about like anti-racism because we're viewed, it's like, there's this model minority myth that Asians are like well-educated and successful or whatever, but you know, guys, like it's, they're, they're, it's not true across the board at all. And um, we face discrimination. We get made fun of all the time. And, you know, most of the time we, you know, we just try to put our head down. We work and we we're quiet and we, we don't say anything. But, you know, I think we're, we're all tired of being quiet. We're tired of letting these things slide. It's not okay. 
it's not okay. And so I just need you to know that I'm hurting. My friends are hurting. My family's hurting. We're scared. I'm not sleeping well. And I can't like just come on here and be happy and make my videos. And just pretend everything's okay. Because it's not okay right now. It's not okay. And we're not okay. <laughs> and I didn't want to cry. <sighs> I had to like, I ordered some pepper spray and I had to explain to Audrey what that was. And now she's like having all this anxiety about getting pepper sprayed and stuff like that. And I just have to like reassure her that no, 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 that's for just in case a bad person tries to do something to mommy. Mommy has something to defend herself with. It's like, why should my nine-year-old have to worry about that stuff? You guys, why? <laughs> and gosh you know I've appreciated the people who have checked in on me but there are so many people who haven't and to me it just feels like no one cares I'm sorry this is not a pleasant video, but this is my life, and I can't, like, I can't just, like, keep pretending everything's okay, and you guys just need to know how this is impacting people. It really hurts. <sighs> And those of you guys who aren't, you know, who, who have the privilege to not have to worry about this because you're, you're not a minority and you're not Asian or black or Latino or you just, I know you can't fully understand, but I hope that you can at least hear me and acknowledge and stand by me that this is wrong. So yeah, I, I don't know what to say. This is, this is definitely like, just so all encompassing. It weighs really heavy on my heart. The pain just doesn't go away. Like, Thank you guys, those of you guys who have reached out. I posted something on Facebook finally because no one was posting, no one was saying anything. And normally, like, I just don't post much on Facebook, but this is too important. This is too important. We have to speak up for ourselves and we have to speak up for each other. And for any of you guys who have experienced, you know, racism, insults, discrimination, like my heart goes out to you. And I know, you know, we may have different experiences, but I see you and my heart goes out to you and I stand with you. We need to stand with each other. We really do. <laughs> this needs to stop. Here are some practical things you can do. Number one, please reach out to your, you know, Asian friends and people in your life who are Asian. I know it might feel awkward to be like, to reach out, but trust me, they will appreciate it. Just say, hey, I've been thinking of you. I know there are, this is, there, there's so much going on right now. And I just want you to know that I'm here for you. I care about you. I see you. I hear you. And let me know if, if you want to talk or, or just hang out or have a shoulder to cry on. <laughs> Number two, there are organizations that 
you can donate to. I, you know, I think you can just, just Google ways to help the Asian American community or something like that. There will be so many articles with so many good ideas that'll pop up. I'm honestly too tired to do the research, too tired to post. Um, there are GoFundMes that have been started for the different families and victims. And then, and then I guess finally too, the other, the other thing you can do is just obviously pray, please pray. And, um, there's a whole program for people to escort the elderly that I think has started up because some, a lot of these crimes are happening in like San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, um, but all, all over the country, all over the country. So if you're vaccinated, that could be something to consider just volunteering for. And you know, if when you're out and about, I know with COVID, we're all just kind of trying to keep to ourselves and not catch COVID, but, um, just keep your eyes open. Just be aware of your surroundings. And if you see something wrong, say something or, you know, call the police, help do something. Okay. There was a heartbreaking situation where a man uh, like who was attacked, he, he said he cried for help and like nobody did anything. That is so wrong. Got to do the right thing. So yeah, and, and post on your post on your social media, increase awareness. I think it's powerful when this comes from non Asian people, because then it doesn't feel like we're just advocating for ourselves, but that other people are standing with us. So if you can post and educate people on social media um, about what's happening, I, I know I and others would appreciate it. So anyway, guys, I didn't, it's not a pleasant video to make, but it's very necessary and I had to say my piece and I had to let you guys know how this is impacting me, how this is impacting my family. We're scared. We're so scared. And I'm just trying, I'm trying to just be, I'm trying to find joy during this. This has been a difficult year. Finally got my second vaccine and finally have a little bit of freedom to maybe go out and, but I'm scared to go out. So it's just so hard. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening and watching. I'm going to turn the comments off on this one. If you want to get a hold of me, just you can email me at littlefitnursery1 at gmail.com or message me on Facebook, Lynn Dolphan. Or you can find my um, you know, Facebook page, facebook.com slash littlefitnursery1. And you can message me there. But I am turning off the comments because I just need to practice self-care and I can't handle... I can't handle negativity right now, okay? So that's just my way of practicing some self-care for myself. <sighs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.